All right, guys, we're gonna continue reading The Wild Robot. We left off on chapter 28, so I'm gonna start at chapter 29, The Beavers. Every day, the beavers swam along their dam, inspecting and repairing it. The wall of wood and mud allowed only a trickle of water to pass through, and it had turned a narrow stream into the wide pond that many animals now called home. As Roz and Brightbill walked around the pond, they passed hundreds of chewed up tree stumps, proof that the beavers needed a constant supply of wood, and this gave Roz an idea. The robot swung her flattened hand, and the sounds of chopping wood echoed across the river. They were soon replaced by the sounds of footsteps and shaking leaves as the robot carefully walked along the beaver dam with a goosling on her shoulder and a freshly cut tree in her hands. The beavers floated beside their lodge and stared at the bizarre sight with open mouths until the beaver slapped his broad tail on the, slapped his broad tail on the water, which meant stop right there. The robot stopped. Hello, beavers. My name is Roz, and this is Brightbill. Please do not be frightened. I am not dangerous. She held out the tree. I have brought you a gift. I thought perhaps you could use this in your beautiful dam. No thanks, said Mr. Beaver. I have a strict policy never to accept gifts from moths. Don't be ridiculous, interrupted Mrs. Beaver. We can't let a perfectly, perfectly good birch go to waste. I am afraid I must insist, said Mr. Beaver. Mrs. Beaver turned to her husband. Remember how you asked me to point out when you're being stubborn and rude? Well, you're being stubborn and rude. Then she turned back to Ross. Thank you, monster. If you be so kind as to drop the tree in the water, we'll take it from there. I'm not a monster. Ross tossed the tree like a twig. I am a robot. The tree smacked against the water and sent the beavers bobbing up and down. Just then, Brightbill started peeping. Mama, hungry! So Ross dropped the ball of grass into the nest. The goosling thinks you're his mother? Came a quiet voice. It was Paddler, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver's son. He's, his real mother is dead, said Ross. So I have adopted him. There was a brief silence. Then, Paddler looked up at Roz and said, you're a very good robot to take care of, right, Bill? Mr. Beaver sighed. Yes, yes, that's very good of you, Roz, but I don't understand what any of this has to do with us. Well, my son and I need a home, and Loudwing said you could help us build one. Of course she did, Mr. Beaver muttered to himself. Loud wing gets me out of one lousy jam and I spent the rest of my days doing her favors. Mrs. Beaver glared at her husband. Sorry, he said, realizing he was being stubborn and rude again. Stay right there, Roz. We need to have a family meeting. <sighs> the three beavers slipped under the water and at that moment, a moment later, their muffled voices could be heard inside the, lo the lodge. The robot stood on the dam and patiently waited for, with their son. Mama, mama. Yes, Sprite Bill, I am trying to act like a good mother. A ripple and Mr. Beaver's head appeared above the water. If you bring us four more trees, good, healthy ones, maybe I'll have time to help you and the gooseling. That is wonderful, said the robot. We will be right back. Chapter 30, The Nest. I built my fair share of lodges over the years, Mr. Beaver stood, as Mr. Beaver stood at the water's edge. But I can't say I've ever built one for a robot and a gooseling, so just what exactly do you need? Well, we need a lodge big enough for us both, said Roz. It should be comfortable and safe, and it should be near the pond. How do you plan on living in this lodge? Mm, I do not know. Then we'd better make sure it's strong and sturdy. Mr. Beaver stroked his whiskers as he thought. Do you plan on having friends over? The missus loves to entertain guests. 
I do not have any friends. No friends? Well, you seem pretty likable for a monster. I mean a robot. But if you want my advice, you should grow yourself a garden. Your neighbors won't be able to resist fresh herbs and berries and flowers. Just you wait and see. So we'll make sure there's a place for a garden and we'll give your lodge some extra space for all the friends you'll be hosting. The beaver winked. We also need to find a way to keep your lodge comfortable when it gets cold outside. Our lodge is heated by our own bodies, but I think we'll have to find another way to heat yours. The beaver and the robot thought about heat for a while. The first thing that came to Raza's mind was the sun, but then she remembered the hot sparks she had felt when sliding down the mountain peak. I could heat our lodge with fire, she said. Mr. Beaver blinked his little eyes. I will need to experiment, Roz continued, but I think there is a way. You go right ahead, Roz, said the beaver, but would you try not to burn down the entire forest? Do not worry, I will be careful. Let's move on, Mr. Beaver sighed. The next order of business is to find a site for your lodge. That meadow across the water would be perfect, but the hares will have a fit if you try to build there. I think we should clear out some trees and build right in the forest, and I know just the place. The beaver took them along the water and up to a dense section of forest that jutted into the pond. It needs some work, said Mr. Beaver, trudging through the thick weeds, but this ought to do the job. Yes, this ought to do the job, said Roz in her friendliest voice. Job, said Bright Bill. Mr. Beaver was incredibly skilled at taking down trees, but even he couldn't keep up with Roz's powerful chopping hands. So he let the robot do the hard work. He pointed out the trees and shrubs that needed to go and Roz started hacking away. By sunset, they were standing in a newly cleared site and they had more than enough wood to build the whole lodge. You did some fine work today, Roz, Mr. Beaver yawned. I'll return in the morning and we'll pick up right where we left off. Well, what would you like me to do, said the robot. Tonight? So you still feel like working, do you? Very good. Well, you can start by digging out these tree stumps and you can collect all those large flat stones over there. And you can smooth down this patch of dirt so we have a level place to build. That should keep you busy. Next morning, Mr. Beaver returned to find that Roz had been very busy indeed. All the tree stumps had been dug up and their holes filled with dirt. 20 large stones had been stacked and the ground was now perfectly level. But what most astonished Mr. Beaver was that Roz and Bright Bill were huddled around a small crackling campfire. Mr. Beaver moved his lips, but no words came out. Bright Bill was cold last night, said Roz, so I taught myself how to make fire. But, but, but how? I discovered that when I strike these two stones together, they create sparks like this. I directed sparks onto dry leaves and wood until they ignited. Once I had a fire, it was easy to keep it going. And if I need to put it out, I can just add water. Mr. Beaver sat and warmed his paws. I've never seen fire in such a neat little bundle. He stared into the flames. I've only seen it blazing through the forest, burning everything in its path, but this is marvelous. He took another minute to enjoy the warmth, and then he and the robot got back to work. Mr. Beaver asked Ross to dig a trench here, to place large stones there, to arrange logs this way, to smear mud that way. Birds and squirrels perched in the trees and watched the new lodge take shape. It resembled the beaver lodge, but it was larger, a great dome of wood and mud and leaves. A simple opening in the wall served as the entrance, and the door was nothing more than a heavy stone that the robot could slide out of the way. Inside the lodge was one big room, one big round room. The arch ceiling was high enough that Roz could stand upright. A fire pit was set into the center of the floor and a mesh of thin branches above acted as a vent. Long stones lined the interior walls like benches and were covered with thick cushions of moss. There was even a hole for storing food and water for Brightbell. You've got yourself a beautiful pond view property, said Mr. Beaver. 
What are you going to name it? I do not understand. Why a beautiful lodge like this deserves a name. We call our lodge Streamcatcher. The robot's computer brain didn't take long. The lodge is for Brightbill. Brightbill is a bird. Birds live in nests. Could we call this lodge the nest? Huzzah, squeaked the beaver. The nest is a fine name for your lodge. Nest, nest, laughed Brightbill. They stood outside the nest and admired their handiwork until Mr. Beaver's belly began to grumble. That sound means it's time for me to go get dinner. Thank you very much for your help, said Roz. We could not have done this without you. You're quite welcome, said Mr. Beaver, smiling. For your garden, you'll want to speak with Tawny, the doe who lives over the hill. She'll know just what to do. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have to hurry home before Paddler eats all the best leaves. Enjoy your first night in the nest. All right, the next chapter is called The First Night. <laughs> we'll start that one next.